Today's the 12th of March 2020. My name is David Hickson and I am coming to you from quarantine in Italy where I live. The entire country of Italy of course has been placed under quarantine. I hope that wherever you are you are safe and not too badly affected by this nasty coronavirus that is traveling around the world. In today's market update, I'm going to speak about the magnitude of the peak that we have experienced. Before we take a look at the markets, I must ask you to please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. So here is the analysis that we've been looking at in the S&P 500. And my previous market update was recorded after we'd seen this first day of downward movement and clearly the markets were turning bearish. In that market update, I spoke about my reasons for thinking that it was likely that the 20-week cycle trough did lie behind us on the 31st of January. I would recommend that you go back and take a look at that market update video if you didn't see it, because I'm not going to repeat the argument here. The important thing is that if that 20-week cycle trough did occur on the 31st of January, as I believe it did, then that provides us with a particularly bearish outlook. Because, as I mentioned in the previous market update video and in the market update video before that, I think, we are looking at the markets coming down into this big nest of lows over here, which is expected in about, about June, about the middle of the year, it's a fairly big magnitude nest of lows and as I mentioned in previous market update videos that means that the market needs to come down into that big cycle trough. Now previously I've spoken about that trough as being of 18 month magnitude but it's interesting at this time to consider given the tremendous strength of this move down whether in fact this could be a greater magnitude trough. And the answer, as you can see in this analysis, and we'll zoom out in a moment, is yes, indeed, it could be a 54-month cycle trough. In fact, it could even be a nine-year cycle trough that we're coming down to. So we're heading down into that trough in the middle of the year. And I must say that so far, the progress of the market down into that trough has been extremely strong. Let's take a look at the 20-day FLD, which, of course, we use to track what is happening in the markets and let's just zoom right in here and speak about the interactions that have occurred. Let me remove these bar counts which we really don't need at this point. Uh, you can go back in the video if you want to have a look at those bar counts. They provide us with interesting information about when we are expecting that big trough. Okay so here was the 20-week cycle trough, in my opinion, and as mentioned in previous market updates, we had our A category interaction, which achieved its target and slightly exceeded it. I spoke about the possibility that the B category interaction was somewhere over here, and the price was bouncing up in a C category interaction, and then we were coming down in a D category interaction. It is still my opinion that that is the sequence that played out. So there's A and B and C. And that this was a D category interaction as price was coming down into this 40-day cycle trough. Now when there's a really big change in the nature or the tone of the market, which is clearly what has happened here, you expect the sequence to still play out, but it will become very distorted. And so when price bounced out of this trough over here, that was on Friday the 28th of March, as you can see from this circle for the 40-day cycle trough, it was, in my opinion, quite likely that that was in fact the 40-day cycle trough. Now what do we expect for the price action following the 40-day cycle trough? We would expect it to come up to the level of the FLD, cross above it and rise an equal distance beyond it. So what does it mean that price didn't reach the FLD? Well, it indicates, as I've mentioned in many previous update videos, it mentions the tone of the market. And it is a clear signal that what we are seeing here is an extremely bearish market playing out. The alternative, as you can probably 
uh, realize if you take a look at the previous market update video is that this is an F category interaction, in which case this is a G category interaction and this is an H category interaction for price to come down into the 20 week cycle trough. Now the reason why I don't think that that is what is playing out is because of the number of days that have elapsed and as mentioned in the previous market update, I don't think that these cycles are stretching that long. I might turn out to be wrong, but in my opinion, what we are looking at is the market coming down into the trough into the middle of the year. Now let's zoom out on this chart and ask ourselves about the magnitude of the trough in the middle of the year. Now this analysis, as you can see, I have pinned the 54 month cycle trough to February of 2016 and you can see we have had one and two 18 month cycles since then and therefore our next cycle trough is expected to be the 54 month cycle trough. Now why do I say that I usually focus only up to the 18 month level? The reason for that is because it is very easy to imagine that in fact this should not be the nine year cycle trough over here, but that in fact these longer cycles should be shifted to the right or of course to the left uh, by one or two 18 month cycles. You must remember that a Hearst cycles analysis is based on a complex puzzle of all of these cycles that have harmonic ratios with one another. And in the case of a stock market that has been rising for a long time, the positioning of these really long cycle troughs can be fairly difficult. And to demonstrate that, let me zoom out even further. This is as far back as the data goes on this chart. Of course, I could load data much further back, but this illustrates the point that I'm trying to make. This analysis has positioned the nine year cycle trough very sensibly, in my opinion, in 2009. That means that the next nine year cycle trough was in 2016. But one could argue that the trough that happened at the end of 2018 was more prominent than the trough in 2016, in which case perhaps the nine year cycle trough should be moved over by one or two 18 month cycles. Certainly it seems fairly reasonable to shift this nine year cycle trough back one 54 month cycle, in which case this one here will also shift back, which would provide us with the expectation for the next nine year cycle trough to be occurring now in the middle of this year. Deciding definitively that the position of these longer cycles is absolutely correct can be difficult, which is why I tend to focus with the amount of data that I'm analyzing here on this chart on the 18 month cycle with the understanding that it might be a longer cycle that is forming a trough at the moment. But why have we seen such an extraordinary move down? Well, we need to start looking at the peaks of the cycles. Now it's important for me to point out here that Hearst discovered that cycles in stock markets are synchronized at their troughs. That's why we get these neat stacks of diamonds at the foot of the chart. As a result of the fact that they are synchronized at their troughs, they cannot mathematically also be synchronized at their peaks. And let me demonstrate that quickly by displaying some semicircles. So here you can see the semicircles have been aligned at the trough points. In other words, the low points of the cycles are synchronized, as you can see. Because of the harmonic ratios between the cycle wavelengths, it is impossible that if the troughs of a cycle are synchronized, that the peaks are also. Here, for instance, is the peak of the cycle of the nine year cycle, and it is occurring at the same time as the trough of the 54 month cycle. Here is the next peak of the nine year cycle, and here is the trough of the 54 month cycle. So you can see in terms of the cycles themselves, the peaks are not synchronized. However, I discovered purely by playing around with some ideas on Sentient Trader that if one performs an analysis using the concept that the peaks are synchronized, 
you can often derive some interesting information. So let's take a look. Here is an analysis that shows the peaks on the assumption that they are synchronized. Now there's a, a small caveat that I need to make. I'm using a slightly different nominal model here, which includes a six-year cycle. It's something that I have found works, particularly when it comes to looking at the peaks in the S&P 500. I'm not going to spend the time explaining that here. I have discussed the six-year cycle in previous update videos, but as a matter of interest, the concept of a six-year cycle works fairly well in the peaks because, as you can see, there are cycles that don't, in fact, have synchronized peaks, even though the software has found a peak of uh, various cycles at a particular point in time, such as the places there where I've indicated with those arrows. Those are not, strictly speaking, synchronized peaks. But let me not get distracted and waste time speaking about that. What is the important message behind this chart? Well, I think it's fairly obvious. We had a really big peak over here, and that's a peak of nine year magnitude at least. We had another big peak over here, and there are these places in the market. So we had a peak in the year 2000. We had another peak in the year 2007. We had a bit of a peak over here. And the important thing is that the magnitude of the peak that we are seeing in this nest of highs over here is the next nine year cycle peak. So why has the market turned so bearish? Potentially, it's because the nine year cycle has now peaked. In other words, we are looking at the market coming down, not just into an 18 month cycle trough in the middle of the year, but into the next nine year cycle trough. Now, that nine year cycle trough, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, potentially might also be going to occur in the middle of this year, in which case this move is going to deepen and we are going to see potentially the biggest move down that we have seen for a very long time. On the other hand, if the trough in the middle of this year is only of 54 month magnitude, then we will see a bounce up and then a further move down into the nine year cycle trough, which you can see according to this analysis is around about 2026. We're going to have a lot of time to talk about that before we get there. And of course, we will monitor things as as the scenario unfolds. But the important thing is that the peak that we have probably encountered is, in my opinion, probably a peak of the nine year cycle. I say nine years, but is it really only a nine year cycle peak? Let's look at the previous nine year cycle peaks. We had a nine year cycle peak over here. We had another nine year cycle peak over here and here is the next one. So what is the next longer cycle? Well, it's probably an 18 year cycle, which means that the 18 year cycle peak occurred in the year 2000. And that means that this is also an 18 year cycle peak. There was a very interesting post in the Hearst Cycles community. I think it was Louis who posted this. He had been looking at cycles going back uh, a really long time and he was taking a look at the 54 year cycle peaks. Now Hearst only discussed cycles up to 18 years in length. Uh, he never really mentioned anything about a longer cycle but we know that from the 18 month cycle we step up to the 54 month cycle. So possibly from an 18 year cycle we step up to a 54 year cycle and Louis pointed out that it is possible that this is also a peak of the 54 year cycle. Now, I don't want to spread panic, but uh, it's an interesting idea. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, I am going to continue considering this as a peak of at least nine years. And if we zoom in and take a look at the peak in a little more detail, you can see that in fact, the nest of highs is really centered around a period of time uh, only towards the end of April. So that peak came in a little early. Uh, the peak analysis you can see was expecting another 80 day cycle to elapse. It would be foolish, of course, to expect the market to bounce up and form the nine year peak uh, because 
it, it fairly obviously has formed already. And that's one of the dangers with looking at a peak analysis because peaks are not always synchronized. It is perfectly possible that uh, you, you know, we get a nine year cycle peak that occurs early. The breakdown of the shorter cycles never works as well as it does with the troughs, which is why I don't very often show a peak analysis because very often the analysis is not very good. But it is useful to keep an eye on the peak analysis and particularly to be aware of the fact that the nine year cycle peak has probably formed in the markets. If that is a nine year cycle peak, then that provides an explanation for why the markets have been moving down so quickly. And it provides information about the fact that we could expect the markets to move down a good deal further. I hope that you've found this market update interesting. Thank you very much for your interest in Hearst Cycles. Look after yourselves and make sure that you stay clear of the coronavirus. And I look forward to hearing from you.